scared to be, to come up and, and talk in front of people. And this season, it's like, you know, I'm still scared and it's still like, oh, but at the same time, I know I got to get it out of me. You know, God has put something in us. We've got to do what God has called us to do. So we can open up to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 6. I need to move it, or is it okay? Oh. So a couple of, probably a little over a month ago, I shared Bible studies with Sister Olga's Bible studies on a Tuesday morning. And when the Lord had given me that message, I kept hearing the Lord said, you need to share this with the church. And I was like, God, I don't want to share the same thing. He goes, it's not the same. You've got to share with the church because what I want to do in this next season of the, of the church, he goes, I need people who are willing and ready to do what I've called them to do through acts of obedience, through, a little, through little steps of obedience, God, God had been telling me. He says, but there's many of us that are in that season where we're saying we're not ready to take that step of faith. We're not ready to step out of our comfort zone. We're not ready to do... Um, to, to fulfill what God has called us to do because we get so scared and we're so into ourselves, into our, our own emotions, our mind, our thoughts, that we allow that to take over what God wants to do. So in Je- I'm going to read it. We all know this. We all know the passage. We all under- know and we've all heard in Sunday school, if you went to Sunday school, we all know about Noah, uh, about him building an ark. This, this ark was was uh, the size of a, a one and a half football fields. When, when you think about it, God came to him and he says, I want you to build an ark for something that he didn't even know nothing really about. They didn't know rain because rain was coming up from the ground. They had the water already for them. So they didn't know what rain was about. So we go to, um, to Genesis 6 verse, verses 5 on down. When the Lord saw that human wickedness was widespread on earth and that every inclination of the human mind was nothing but evil all the time, the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth and he was deeply grieved. Then the Lord said, I will wipe mankind whom I create of off, off of the face of the earth together with the animals, creatures that crawl and birds of the sky for I regret that I made them. Noah, however, found favor with the Lord. When I began to read this, I was like, man, Lord, you regret it that you made us. And for me, I was like, man, Lord, let me not ever be at a place that you regret making me. Verse 9 continues on and says, these are the family records of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among contemporaries. Noah walked with God. And Noah fathered three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and the earth was filled with wickedness. God saw how corrupt the earth was, for every creature had corrupted its way on the earth. Then God said to Noah, I have decided to put an end to every creature, for the earth is filled with wickedness because of them. Therefore, I am going to destroy them along with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it with pitch inside and outside. This is how you are going to make it. The ark will be 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, 45 feet high. You are to make a roof finishing the sides of the ark within 18 inches of the roof. You are to put a door on the side of the ark, make it with lower, middle, and upper decks. Understood understand that I am bringing a flood, flood waters on the earth to destroy every creature, every creature under heaven with the breath of life in it. Everything on earth will perish, but I will establish my covenant with you and you will enter the ark with your sons, your wife, your sons' wives. You are also to bring into the ark, and then it continues on. And then in verse 22, it says, and Noah did this, He did everything that God had commanded. 
This morning, I want to talk about obedience. Church, many times in our life, God tells us to do something. We want to know the whole picture. We want to know, well, God, you told me to do this, so what am I, what am I going to have to, what's it going to entail for me to get there? Sometimes it looks like losing a job. Sometimes it looks like losing family members or people not wanting to talk to you. Sometimes it looks like when you're making, taking that step of faith, the people made fun of him for building because they're like, what are you talking about? You continue on and understand and continue reading about Noah's life. They were making fun of him for building. Look at the old man. You know, here he was 100 years old. It took him 120 years to build. Can you imagine building this? It's like, there's still no rain. What's rain? They're telling, what's rain? What are you talking about? But he, he said, no, I'm going to do what God has called him. But you know why he's, he continued to do what God called him to do? Because he walked with God. He had a relationship with the Lord, understanding, and he was sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Many times God is ta- trying to talk to us, because, but because we're not sensitive and we're not listening and we're so full of ourselves that we don't hear what he's telling us. He's saying, I'm telling you to go talk to this person about Jesus. We're like, ah, that's just heartburn, something I ate last night. I'm telling you to go love on this individual. Ah, no, no, no. I'm telling you to go bless this individual with, with, with whatever's in your pocket. Oh, no, God, that's mine. I'm going to go shopping or I'm going to go do this or, or whatever. That's my Starbucks money. That's this. That's that. And we're saying, no, God, no, God. And God's saying, so you're really not listening to me. A part of obedience, church, is is understanding that even in the small seasons and the small details, God is saying, can you listen to what I'm telling you? Obedience is, I'm going to read you the definition. Obedience is compliance with an order, request, or law, or submission to another's authority. The Bible definition in the Old Testament says it's to hear, to listen, hearing the word of God and acting on it. It amplifies aligning our will to God's will, doing what God has asked us to do. It is when when we completely surrender to his authority. Church, obedience is an act and an attitude of the heart towards God. Church, when, when has God told you to do something and you haven't listened? I know that there were seasons in my life where I remember God telling me, to do this or to do that, and because I allowed fear to overtake me or I allowed what people said about me to overtake me, then I didn't want to do it. See, there was a season in my life where, where uh, I was, I don't know, my late 20s, early 30s, and, and an individual came to me and he said, you're going to work with women. I'm like, you're crazy. I don't even like women. I go, I don't want to work with them. They're drama. I don't want to work with women, this and that. He goes, no, God has a call on your life. You're going to work with women. So I was just like, so I went to my husband. I go, babe, he's crazy. I'm like, he's crazy. I don't want to hear what he says. But inside of my heart, I knew, I knew that I knew that this is what God was already preparing my heart for. And so as I walked through that season, I was like, Lord, I trust you. Help me to fall in love with women in your ways that you want me to teach them. And he began to change my heart. He began to do things in my heart. And I was like, oh, why is this? Why do I feel like this? Why is this? And I remember when, as we started the church, the Lord told me, I was talking to the Lord and I told him, God, you know, I was getting older and and I'm like, I'm 40 and I don't want to celebrate my birthdays, God, I've done enough, I want to give back to you. And I remember that season when the Lord said, okay, then I want you to start doing women's events during that season of your birthday season. And he kept telling me, and I didn't understand what it was going to entail, I didn't understand all of that, but a few years prior to that, he had given me a dream, and he told me, in my dream, I dreamed that I was preaching to, to hundreds of women, and I was like, I don't even like talking in front of people, God. I get nervous. They drain me, and I, I, I'm honest. But he said, are you willing to, to do what I've called you to do? And all I remember saying, okay, God, I trust you. 
Fast forward over these last nine years that I've, we've been able to do the women's events, we've had hundreds and hundreds of women come throughout. I've been able to minister to women, and, and I see what the transformation and what God is doing in the lives of women. I am so grateful that in that season that I didn't say no, that I didn't say, God, I don't trust you in this, because I was okay to say, God, I trust you. I trust what you say. I'm going to be obedient. But many times we, when we walk in obedience, we have to understand that there's going to be times that there's going to be obstacle, obstacles that come in our way. Obstacles like people are not going to like you. Sometimes people are going to be jealous. Sometimes, well, why, are God, why is God using her? Why is God using him? Why is he doing this? Why is he doing that? They just got here. Why are they doing this and that? And God's saying, you want to know why? Do you want to know why? Because they're saying yes. So many times we've been in the church so long, we're just sitting there looking cute. We're just like, mm, I dare you to move me today. I dare you to move me. Let, let me see if you're going if, if to tickle my feathers today. And God's saying, I'm trying to speak to you to tell you because there are lost and dying people just like Noah. Noah understood this world was corrupt. He understood, you know what else Noah did after the long day that he would be building this boat? He went and told the people about Jesus. Even though he was laboring and laboring, he still went and told the people about Jesus. Church, many of us, we may be tired. We may be working 10, 12-hour jobs, whatever it may be, but you still have that ability. You still have that, that, that God-given talent to say, go and tell somebody about Jesus. Many of us are so holding on to it, we're not telling them. And, and this generation is going to go to hell because we're holding it in. Because we're not being obedient in that line at the grocery store. You see somebody, you see it all over them. You see them broken. You see them crying out inside. They're like, somebody, just speak to me. You never know what one kind word or one lo being loving on somebody can do for somebody else. That individual could be in the, in the thought process of committing suicide. That individual could be in the thought process of, man, my life is hell. But one word is all it takes. Jesus loves you. Jesus is there for you. You know what? I was once in that place, but God set me free. But many times we're so disobedient. Do you know that a partial disobedience is still disobedience? We say, God, okay, I'm going to do this much but yet, not this. Well, God, you told me to go tell this individual, but I'm telling you to tell this one, this one, and that one. Well, I'm only going to tell that one because they smell good. <laughs> they don't, this one don't look like me or don't act like me. That's still disobedience. Church, many times we sit back and we're sitting here and we're like, oh, we'll let the next person do it. We'll let that individual do it. We'll let that individual talk to people about Jesus. And it's like, no, no, no. God's saying, I called you. You're the ones that God placed in your job. You're the one that God placed in your family. But what are you doing? We're sitting there. We're just too busy eating and too busy. Oh, the comandre tamen right there. And listening to the gossip. Oh, did you know? Oh, yeah, I heard about that too, girl. Oh, yeah. And God's saying, no, stop them in their track, no. Did you know that pastor said something, this and that, and this and that? And we're sitting here talking about pastors and, and this and that, and God's saying, no, stop the gossip right there. Stop it. Stop being disobedient. Stop being a tool of the enemy to, to bring people down. Did you know that so, sister so-and-so, she was supposed to teach you, she didn't come. And, and because of her, I had to teach again. And we get so upset, and we're like, but God's placed you in, a, in the ability to be able to say, God, I can do this. I still have breath. I can move my hands. I can move my feet. I can love on these kids because at the end of the day, like Noah, those people were corrupt. Look at our outsides right now. Look at our world that we're living in. This world is corrupt. Just like Noah's days, they're corrupt. 
We're, we're seeing what's right is wrong, what's wrong is right. We're seeing that this color is supposed to be blue. No, it's green. We're seeing this color is supposed to be pink. No, it's yellow. We're fighting over this on the internet. Come on. This is the world we're living in. And God's saying, church, I'm calling you to be an example. I'm calling you to be a light in this world, in this dark time. Amen. Will opposition come? Yes. We could go to Acts. Acts 5. So we, here we have um, John and Paul who, who they were arrested because they were speaking about Jesus. In verse 17 it says, But the high priest rose up and all who were with them, and they were filled with jealousy. And they arrested the apostles and put them in a public prison. But during the night, the angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go and stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words this life. And when they heard this, they entered the, temp the temple at daybreak and began to teach. Now when the high priest came and, and those who were with, were with him, they called together the council all the senate of the people of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came, they did not find them in the prison. So they returned and reported. And we're going to skip down to verse 20, uh, 25. And someone came and told them, look, the men who you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain with the officers went and brought them, but not by force, for they were afraid of being stoned by the people. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest questioned them, saying, We strictly charged you not to teach in this name. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Verse 29 is my key verse for this portion. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. Church, when God tells you something, to go and speak to somebody. When God tells you something to go to, to start a Bible studies, to begin to speak to or, or sit one-on-one -on -one with an individual to t start raising them up and start equipping them. And God's telling you, he's putting it in your heart. Maybe he's telling you to start a Bible studies with your own family. Many times there's going to be that opposition that comes in and says, nope, I'm not going to let you do this. Or there's going to be things... No, you're not, you're not equipping your word. Then the lies of the enemy comes in. You're not equipping your word. You don't know this. What are you going to really teach them? What are you going to do this? Bring the doubt and the fear and the different things in our lives that will get us to stop doing what God's told us to do. But many times we walk in this, as it says, that they were jealous. Sometimes in our lives, people will be jealous of what God's called us to do. Sometimes in our lives, people will have that opposite, those things and try to say, well, this person's not equipped to do that. You want to sing? You can't even sing in the shower, but yet they have a heart for it. You can't even, you can't teach the kids. I can't teach the kids. They're, they know more than me. We'll learn together, church. Let's learn together. God's saying that this is a day that he's saying, I'm calling you to be obedient unto what I'm telling you because at the end of the day, this world is corrupt, church. We're sitting here. We're fighting against each other. We're fighting against this. We're fighting against that. And God's, because there's opposition. Do you know how much opposition came in our lives to get to the place that we are today? Many times in our lives we've said yes in one season. It didn't happen till another. Sometime when, when God told us when we were kids that we were going we were gonna to be pastors, it didn't happen for 20 years. You know why? Because God was working on our character. Sometimes we want to rush. God told me this, so I'm going to do it right, right now. And God's saying, wait. Wait. Let me prepare you. 
Let me equip you. Or many times we turn around and we run from it. Well, I'm not going to go to that church anymore because God called me to, called me to do something, but I'm not going to go anymore. So we run from it. We run from what God's calling us because we're getting, we're getting hit, we're getting tested. Oh, this person is talking about me. That person's talking about me. This person, this, whatever. But what did God say about you? In Isaiah 54, 17, he says, No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. All those who rise up against you shall, this portion is different, against you in judgment, this is the heritage of the servant of the Lord, and their vindication for me, declares the Lord. Job 13, 15 says, though he slay me, I will hope in him. Amen. Church, many times we have to be reminded we have to trust and hope in the Lord. As he's calling us to the next season, as he's calling us to fulfill his plans and purpose, as he's calling us to say, God, sometimes it's God saying, I need you to do just one more thing. I need you to do a little bit more. I need you to take that step of faith here and that step of faith there. Sometimes it's, it's, sometimes it's our pocketbook. God's saying, I need you to trust me a little bit more. He's saying, but, but many times we're saying, oh, no, God, that's mine. Don't even talk about my pocketbook. Don't even talk about my wallet. Don't talk about my, my, my EBT, my debit card, all these other things that I have. And God's saying, I'm telling you to give just a little bit more. And we're like, nope, that's a lie. I'm out of here. God's saying our, our obedience needs to be at a place where we're saying, God, even through the hard times, I'm going to trust you. You know, many times in our lives, we, we've gone through some crazy stuff in our lives. People walking out on us, people talking about us, different stuff in our lives. But all we can do is say, nevertheless, God, your will be done. If we would have given up in the seasons that we wanted to, because believe me, uh, there was many times that I was ready to give up. I was ready to throw in that towel, and I said, God, I'm tired, I'm done. I'm tired of this, I'm tired of that. I don't know what's going to happen in this next season. I don't know what's going to happen. And yeah, we all fight through it. We all have to work through it. But God's saying, do you trust me? Through our, through our acts of obedience, God will build our faith. Hebrews 11, verse 1, it says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the convictions of things not seen. Hebrews 11, 6 says, And without faith it is impossible to please him, for he comes to God, must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of those who seek him. Church, are you seeking him this morning? Are you seeking his will for your life? Are you seeking his will, trusting him? Proverbs 3, 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Are you, trust him? Are you trusting him enough to know that he is able to do above and beyond what you could imagine? Maybe, again, maybe it's that, it's like the Thompsons, that God calls him and says, I'm going to send you to a foreign country that you've never been, you and your children. They trusted God enough to say, okay, yes, God. Your will be done in our lives. And not only was your will done in their lives, he used them, not just them, but their children, to minister to people in Thailand. And whatever God's going to do next in the next season in their life, watch what he does. Mark my word, it's because this couple said yes to the Lord that God was able to do above and beyond what they could imagine, provided every means for them for their household, for everything, and continually doing so. Church, what has God told you to do that he's trying to teach you? I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to make a way where there seems to be no way. I'm going to make a way in the wilderness, in the times of, of trial, in the tri times of testing, in the times where, in the good, in the bad. He says, watch what I can do, but will you be obedient to what God's telling you? Many times we sit back and we say, God, I trust you this much. I don't, I, I don't have enough faith. If you don't have enough faith or you can't trust God enough, borrow somebody else's. 
Say, sister, I need your help today. Pray with me. I need the help of the Lord. Brother, I need your help to pray with me. I can't do this. I don't have the faith today to stand. There's many times in my life that I had to say, somebody pray for me. I can't go on. I feel like I want to give up. And God's saying, don't do it. Do you have faith in me? Enough faith to trust that even through every circumstances, you don't know the whole picture. Because if I showed you the whole picture, then you wouldn't want to get to where I'm trying to take you. See, many times we want God to tell us what it looks like on the other side. And he's saying, no. Just like we always say the grass is greener on the other side. No, it takes work. It still takes work. You still have to go out there with that lawnmower and, and that weed eater and cut the weeds. You have to go out there with the, the lawnmower and cut it. You have to go out there and water. And we're sitting here saying, oh, that church looks better over there now. Or that thing looks better over there now. And God's saying, I've called you here. I've called you to do what I've told you to do right now. Quit running. Quit running and trust me. Is your faith big enough to say, God, I trust you with the season I'm in, even though it's tough, even though I don't know where my finances are going to come from, even though my children walk away from you, God, I trust you, even though so-and-so don't want to talk to me, even though this and that, they may say this and that about me, God, but I trust you. Can you trust God knowing that if I continue to walk through and continue to walk through, you are going to see the victory. You are going to see your children sitting next to you. You are going to see your grandchildren sitting next to you. You are going to see the fulfillment of God in you for your life. We must walk by faith and not by sight. Many times we're so quick, we're walking by sight. Well, I see this. I see that dirt right there on the wall, so... Oh people don't even clean, and we get all mad. But in reality, we have to walk and see, God, what are you doing? We walk by sight in the spiritual things. We walk and see what God wants to do. We walk and see, God, can I be obedient? Even, even in the times where I'm laying in bed and I can't move and my body's aching, but yet I trust you. Even in those times when the, Lord, when the doctors try to tell me that, that this and that was wrong with me and this and that was wrong with me, that they, that, that they the, when I had the COVID and they tried to tell me that my heart was giving out of me, I was like, your will be done, God. If you want to take me, take me. I remember having that conversation with the Lord and I was frustrated. He goes, but do you trust me? Do you trust me? The plan that I gave you is not over. Are you going to be obedient and continue to walk in? Or are you just going to give up? Many times we're just giving up, throwing in the towel, saying, I'm done. This, this is not coming to pass for me. This is not coming to pass for me. It took 120 years for Noah to build this ark. Can you imagine if he would have gave up 120 days? Or even 120 minutes because people were laughing at him? Look at that guy. He's cutting down the gopher wood. Look at him. But many times we do. Oh, they're laughing at me. We're all with, all with our tail between our legs, ah, crying. But, but yet we don't see the outcome. Obedience is ours. Pastor always says this. Obedience is ours. The outcome is the Lord's. Are you trusting the outcome, church? Many times we don't want to walk by faith because we're saying, I don't trust you. We can, uh, Matthew 9, 22, it says, let me open it, sorry. Matthew chapter 9, verse 22. Jesus turned and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter. Your faith has made you well. Church, sometimes I think we need to be reminded is that we got to take heart and be reminded that our faith will make us well. Our faith will make us, will, will prepare us for seasons that we're not ready to go into, maybe. Maybe we're not 
equipped to go into it, but he says, our faith will make you well. Church, are you walking by faith or are you walking by sight? Are you walking by the things that are around you, the world around you, what the enemy is lying to you, what, what so-and-so is talking about you, what so, this and this is, is saying, or, or what, what even your surroundings may look like. You may not have the money for this or that or, or the job or something, but God's saying, do you trust me in the process when we walk in obedience, we're not shocked what God does for us. Noah's obedience led his family to be saved. See, obedience also releases God's miracles. Many times that there's miracles in our lives that God wants to do, and God's saying, I want to release these miracles in your lives, but you're not trusting me. You're in that place of, of because of frustration season, because of this, because of that. You're not trusting me. You're not seeing what I want to do. We just want to see everything else, and we don't want to walk. There's many to this. Unfortunately, this day and age, we want to give up. We want that instant thing. I want it, and I want it now. It reminds me of Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory when the, when the little girls go, no, I want it now. And that's many of us. We throw our little tantrums, God, I want it now. And God's saying, no, Wait. You're not equipped. You're not ready yet. He says, I'm trying to work some stuff out in you. I'm trying to perfect you. Just like that potter, he's saying, I'm going in there. I have to break it down again because your flesh is getting in the way. Your mind is getting in the way. Your thoughts are getting in the way. Your words are getting in the way. And God's saying, I'm trying to work it back together. He's saying, I'm trying to do it. But you're getting in the way. We stick our hands and say, no, God. God releases miracles. Noah understood that as he continued, he was a righteous man before God. He did what God to cutting that, making the things, the, the wood, putting it all together. It was, like I said, it was the size of a one and a half football fields. Never been to a football field, so I'm pretty sure it's pretty big <laughs> from what I've seen on TV. And then four, four uh, stories high. It was huge. This thing was huge. But he kept doing it. He kept doing it. He kept going on. He kept going on. And as a result of his obedience, as a result of him continuing to do what God told him to do, his family was saved. Church, many times we give up right before the breakthrough. Many times we give up right before God's saying, okay, I'm ready to open this door for you, but, we're, but because we turn this way, the door was already open, and we turn this way, and we're like, what happened now? And then we're going through something else, and we're like, then we have to go back around, and then around until we, can, until we finally say, okay, God. Because we give up right before what God wants to do. Church, many of you guys are at that place where God's saying, I'm ready to release. But are you going to be obedient? Your family will be here. Your children will be saved. Your children will be serving the Lord. Because I don't know about you, there are many times where you have to go to God and say, Lord, ask for me and my house trusting God, even though you don't see it, even though the enemy has come in and said, I'm going to take your kids, I'm going to take your grandchildren, I'm going to take your family, I'm going to do this or do that, take your marriage, and we sit there and we just give up. And God's saying, don't give up. What I hear in the Lord saying today is, don't give up before the breakthrough, church. Be obedient to what God has called you to do and walk through those walls, walk through those doors, walk through the seasons, even though it's tough. Trust in God and say, God, I trust you because I know my baby's going to be here. I know my children will be here. I know my husband will be here. I trust you, God, that no matter what I go through, that you are able to do above and beyond what I could imagine. So don't give up. Don't give up because you don't see the rain. Don't give up because you don't see it in the natural. Amen. He's saying, don't give up. 
See, because as you go and you continue to walk through, when you continue to walk through, you continue to see, then the miracles come to place. My baby's here. My baby's here. When you, you can sit here and say, man, God, I went through that hell of a season, God, but look at what he's done now. Look at what he's done now. My baby's here. And I, there are times when we wanted to give up. Times like, God, I don't understand this. I don't understand this season we're in, God. Just don't give up. When I continue to read and I was like, Lord, the miracles. And then I thought, I... <laughs> and the Lord reminded me of Sarah. You know when the miracle came? When they finally had their baby? It's when she learned to submit. When she submitted to her husband and said, Lord, not that he was Lord, not that anything like that, but she submitted unto him, to his authority and who he was and who he is, was called to be. Yes. Church, many times we have to understand, you know when the miracles are going to come to place? When we submit. And we say, yes, God. Yes to your will. Yes to your purpose. Yes, even through the hard times, even through the times where I want to give up, Lord, but yes, God. That is when the miracle was able to take place, when she was able to have this child, the promise that God had given her, that she would be the mother to many nations. Church, many of you are called to be the parents or the father, the mother, the grandparents to many nations, what God wants to do in your family's life. But because you've given up and you're not submitting to the will of God, you're not submitting to what God has called you, we're forfeiting it. We're having that spiritual abortion because we stop what God wants to do. Church, we need to stop. God's saying, be obedient in this season. What God's saying, that can you trust me in those seasons? Even through the season that you feel like giving up, even through the seasons when you feel like, I don't know what else I can do, God. But he's saying, can you trust him? Church, I believe in this, in this age, all it takes is one simple act, one simple yes. One simple yes of, of a young person. I remember at a... As a teenager, I had my ups and downs. I went through all kinds of stuff and all that. But I remember saying, it was December of 88. I was eight and a half months pregnant, 15 years old. I remember going up to the altar and fully surrendering to the Lord. Because I was like, Lord, I don't want to raise this kid not knowing, for one, not knowing how, being a teenager, all these odds stacked against me. But God, I trust you. Not knowing that, even through, through that, even through me, me trusting the Lord and saying yes in that season, you know, the, the many yeses throughout, the many yeses through throughout my lifetime, the many yeses, and yes, sometimes no's. Believe me, I tell God no a lot. I had to get that whip in, like, oh, God, like, oh, okay, God, I'm sorry. But through the many yeses, I, I can see his faithfulness through every season. Church, as we learn to say yes in God, God, your will be done. Not mine, not his, not hers, not theirs, not nobody else's, but your will be done. Church, as we learn to trust him, when we understand that when we say yes, that he can move mountains. Uh, Kat, if I can have you call. Second Corinthians 10.5 says, We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself against the knowledge of God. We take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Church, we've got to take captive our thoughts. 
to, to allow them to be obedient to Christ. When the enemy tries to lie to you and tell you things or try to stop you from fulfilling God's plan, we say, no, no, I trust God. A part of it, a part of us trusting God and being obedient is, is we have to hear the word of God and obey it. Luke eleven twenty eight says, he replied, blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. Romans 5, 19 says, for just as though the disobedience of one man, the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of one man, many will be made righteous. Church, if you say yes, you have the ability to change other people's lives and they become righteous before the Lord. If you just sit back and think, God, who are the people that you have placed in my life that I wasn't obedient telling them about you? But then you look and say, God, because of the obedience, this person is here. This person is here. Sometimes you may not see it here and now, the transformation in a person's life. But just like God called you, God has called everybody. We have to be that mouthpiece, church. We have to be obedient to be able to say, Lord, I trust you and I'm going to speak the word of God into this individual's life, into my co-worker's life, into my family's life, into the person I don't know's life. Can we trust him through it? We could all stand this morning. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to close with this scripture. It says, Proverbs 13, 19 says, a desire fulfilled is sweet to the soul. Church, when we're obedient to the Lord, we will see our desires fulfilled. We will see God's plans fulfilled. And it is so sweet. I look back on all the times in our lives that we, the simple yes. And I look back and I look out this morning and this is sweet to the soul. Because what God told us in one season where again we could have given up and said, no, I'm not going to wait for it, God. But as he prepared and he equipped us and he dealt with our characters and still doing so today, but I see this, I see the house of God full. I see our children, our children being ministered to. I see my grandchildren. I see God doing things, my nieces, my nephews. I see God doing things, my, my mom, my mother-in-law, all the different people that God has placed in our lives. But because we said, one person said yes. Church, are you ready to say yes to the will of God in your life? Are you ready to stop fighting it? Some God has called you to take that extra step. So today is the day, church. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your word, God, that even through the trials, God, even through the different circumstances of life, my God, God, that you build our faith, my God, and we understand that the miracles are made, God, as we surrender to you, Lord. Father, we thank you, my God, for the gifts and the call that you have on each and every person in this room, Lord. Lord, I pray, God, I know that you have been speaking to many people's heart, Lord, and they're just needing to take that extra step of faith this morning, Lord. Lord, challenge them to do so, Lord. I don't know if the Lord spoke to you on anything, but this morning, this altar is for you. If you're willing to say yes, Lord, to your will, not my will, God, but yours be done. The altars are open as Sister Cat sings this song. Lord, we thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. We say yes to you, Lord. Yes to your will, God. I don't see it, you're working.
myself
to you I belong I give myself I give myself to you my life is not my own to you I belong I give myself I give myself to you my life is not church this week, I challenge you to go before the Lord and ask him, what is he telling you? What is he wanting you to do? I challenge you that you would take that step of faith, write it down, and watch what God can do. The places he's wanting to take you the things he's wanting to do in you and through you, watch what he does. Like Noah, who was a righteous man, he heard the Lord. You know why he heard the Lord? Because he sought after him. Church, I challenge you. The Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. So church this week begin to seek the Lord God what is it that you're saying what is it that you're wanting to do in my life what is it that I need to say yes and quit saying no to so Lord I pray God this week God that you would speak to the hearts of your children every person watching online every person who will watch later God every person that we will speak to this week God let us be reminded, God, that a small part of disobedience is still disobedience, God. That our, our thing is, God, just to be obedient unto you, and you will work everything out for our good, Lord. Father, we thank you, God, and we trust you, God, for all that you're going to do, God. It may not be tomorrow, God. It may be a week. It may be a month. It may be a couple of years, Lord. But we wait to see the victory in you. Father, as we go this, this morning, we leave this place, Lord, but not from your presence, Lord. We trust you in all things, Lord. We thank you, and we are careful to give you all praise, Lord. In your precious name, amen. God bless you, church. Amen.